about Cam and uh, KJ. Those are two guys from Maryland. This is their rivalry game. Talk a little bit about how they play today and about getting those guys out of Maryland and come down to Wake Forest because I think one of them helped get the other down. Yeah, you know, it was really kind of kind of funny uh, uh, going in. My biggest fear was I told the players in the locker room after the game, uh, and, and we talked about it earlier, but uh, could we recapture that energy that we had for NC State? And it's really, really hard to go out each week and, and find, you know, something to get you motivated. Uh, but there were two guys that were super motivated today. You know, I thought, I thought Mike and KJ both, uh, really wanted to come out and play well, and uh, I think we'll find out they both did. I know Cam played really, really well, and I think we'll feel like KJ played really well going against some pretty talented, yeah, going against some pretty talented receivers too. And uh, so they they had no problems with energy this week, uh, and maybe the other 98 fed off them, but uh, it was totally a, a good team win, and I thought. Uh, I think two weeks uh, in a row now, we were open last week, of course, but the last two games in a row, uh, we've, we've played with a great energy level, and that's been fun. I mean, it's just fun to coach when your guys are excited about taking the field and playing. How nice is it to have a guy like Cam bring and down, a guy like you to have that kind of recurring, recruiting kind of thing where you find one guy one place and he comes back to the yard, another good guy on our team? Yeah, I think that's our best recruiting tool. You know, we've had a lot of kids from different school, bowl school. We've had a lot of kids come in, and I think once you've had a kid that's uh, that's uh, Bartram Trail, I mean, we've had a bunch of schools where once you've had one kid that's happy, it's easier to recruit other kids from that school. But you never really uh, think that you're going to get back-to-back -back kids like Camp and KJ. I mean, you just you don't even think that that's possible, but. You know, two of the best players that we've had since I've been here uh, are from the same school and actually in different classes. And, and to be, you know, for KJ to be a junior and Camp to be a senior, both those guys play as good as they are is really something that you never plan on happening. And uh, they're just they're just two. Not the not the cool thing about those two guys is they're not just good players; they're really good guys. I mean, they're really good kids. You mentioned you got a lot of football left to play, and obviously you do. But you have to give yourself a chance to have a good year. Well, how, how are you able to get it back after after Clemson after really getting the I, I think uh, Dan, it was players. I really do. I, I think uh, our, our guys uh, have pride. Our guys uh, want to play football. I think I think we just uh, you know went to sleep against Louisiana Monroe. We just kind of showed up and we didn't play. And I don't take anything away from them. I thought I think the quarterback's big time, and I think they've got some really good players, but. You know, at home we should win those games. Those close games we should win. And I think after that game, our guys woke up. And uh, and then of course the embarrassing uh, uh, game down at Clemson uh, really kind of uh, emphasized that. And uh, so our guys are a little bit on a mission right now. I hope we can stay that way. That's going to be the key. Can we continue to to play good every week? Play hard every week? Play with emotion every week? Uh, nothing's going to be easy. You know, we, we, we possibly have five ball teams left on our schedule. So, you know, everybody everybody we play, every every time we're out there, we got we got to play good. How disappointed are you with the tackling on the special team and the kids making plays? Well, you know, the, the thing that happens, Mike, when you know, I hear people talk uh, all the time about, uh, you know, tackling's not as good as it used to be and all those kind of things. Uh, but with the uh, emphasis that we've got now on safety, especially concussions, and and you know that most of your injuries occur in live tackling drills in practice and in games, uh, you just don't tackle anymore in practice. You just can't do it. You know we don't have any live drills during the week. You know our our number one goal is to get healthy kids to Saturday. And with that being said, not only do we not go live offense and defense tackling. Uh, we especially don't go live special teams. And I think what we're going to be more disappointed in than, than we're going to be disappointed in missed tackles, and I mentioned earlier I'm disappointed in our special teams, but I think maybe more than anything is just the coverage. You know, we took on too many blocks. We weren't beating blocks. It looked like we were uh, sleepwalking out there sometimes. And uh, making a tackle is one thing, but putting yourself in a position to make a tackle is something completely different. I think that's what we're going to not be very happy with was how we covered uh, the kicks, and then uh, you know we'll continue. We work tackling every day almost. I mean, we we work. We just can't live tackle. 
and uh, so uh, you do best you can try to have a healthy team every Saturday and you hope as you you know possibly if I wanted to make excuses for that it, it could be a week off you know it would have been nice to have just rolled out of the NC State game and come right to Maryland and uh, probably the one area that <coughs> suffered the most were your special teams after an open day. Did you know that Arnold Palmer was going to open the gate? And if so, what's it like running out after, after that as a, as a golfer of some run out of yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I would uh, I would not call myself a golfer of some renown, um, and uh, I don't think anybody that's ever seen me play would either. So that's we'll get that out of the way uh, quickly. But I knew that he was he was going to open the gate. Uh, I really had no idea he was going to ride the motorcycle. You know, I heard somebody somebody apparently said they were trying to get him to take a golf cart out with the motorcycle, but he wanted to ride the motorcycle. So I thought that was really really cool. I think. You know, who, who, who got the biggest kick out of that were our players. Because they're right out there, you know, and we got all that. I mean, once they fire, the thing I was worried about is once they fire that uh, motorcycle up, I'm afraid it's going to gas everybody, you know. And so the fumes are so thick back there. And I was really worried about Mr. Palmer, you know, being on the back of that motorcycle and all the fumes coming up. But uh, it was a special day for us. It's special uh, to be Maryland, obviously, but it's also special to have Arnold Palmer here for that. What else? Uh, sprained ankle. He dressed out. Yeah, he sprained his ankle, uh, Dan, uh, at, at practice Tuesday. Yeah. We were working on special teams. We were working on a kickoff return, and uh, he didn't get hit. He just planted and sprained his ankle, rolled it over. And I told him we have a, a, a new rule on the team: you may not hurt yourself. You know, if, if somebody else hurts you, it's okay, but you're not allowed to hurt yourself. So. I hope we'll get him back soon. I think, you know, Twisty he rolled it pretty good. And, uh, you know, he, he was really, well, you know, what's funny, the one of the things I was most excited about with Orville is he's blocking good. He really blocking well on the perimeter. So hopefully we'll get him back for Miami. We'll see how it goes. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you.